In this section, we want to talk about knowing your community and how absolutely essential this is in creating long-standing employment opportunities. Earlier on, we talked on the strength of customized employment. In particular, how the informed approach to businesses focusing on meeting unmet needs to the mutual benefit of all parties creates stronger employer-employee relationships and helps to build natural supports. We have talked on some of the tools to approach employers, how to discuss employment opportunities and how to work with them for all parties to be successful. In this section, we want to talk a little about the background work to building the relationships and community that allow a successful approach to working with businesses. You will notice common themes in the comments of each service provider. There is a direct correlation on community presence and understanding and how the service provider approaches and works with businesses to create those lasting relationships that build natural supports and sustained employment. Community means connections. Connections is networking. Networking. It's hard to do from your office and it isn't always during office hours. Often it is in your spare time, on the weekends, and part of your social activities. Experts will tell you it takes seven meets or encounters to create real recognition and start a relationship. We all have social capital. We just need to recognize it and use it. We are all surprised when we sit down and try to list who we know in our community. And it is not only about knowing the businesses in your community. It is knowing the large businesses as well as the smaller owner-manager businesses. But it is also about knowing the volunteer-driven organizations, community events, and other community services. There are many ways to get to know your business community. Drive around. Go beyond the major routes. Drive the back roads. Visit job sites. Observe employees perform their job duties. Begin to identify natural supports. Employers are in business. They will hire someone who can do the job. Observe the businesses in action. Think about how an individual can help the employer, not what they can do for you. Several service providers have noticed that once you embrace customized employment, you will never look at a business that you see regularly in your day-to-day -day routine in the same way. You always think of employment opportunities, or what is missing, or what could be done more efficiently by someone else in the business. Join and be part of community organizations. More than that, just don't go to meetings. Introduce yourself. Do something on a committee. Directly engage with other members. For example, join the Chamber of Commerce. Volunteer an event. Chair a committee. In the next few slides, we will hear from Tina Fravro from Community Link Connections, Inc. and Barb Gertson from Solution Employment Services, which is part of Delta Community Living Society, on some practical insights on how they got to know and understand their community. Okay, so why don't we talk just a little bit about your approach to marketing under the customized employment tool? I, th I think there is a basic foundation that you have to spread the word in the community. I don't really believe in just going out there and market to employers about my service in general for customized employment. I spread the information in the community to let everybody know that we are a resource and we are interested in supporting and partnering with businesses in regards to finding employees and supporting people on the job. But really, most of the marketing we did was really very person specific. It's when we support a person and we, you know, have identified vocational themes, we then make connections with employers. But again, it's so hard to say because we have already so many connections because we have been involved. So you want to be, you want to network, you want to network and you want the community, the business community to know who you are and what you do. I think the best way to do that is to become actively involved in one or two organizations. That will take time out of your work, but it will mean that you develop relationships where the other employers know they can trust you. I think that for us in Ladysmith, that has been really, really key that people know if Community Link says, you know, they're going to do that, 
they are going to do it. So we are not just a, a fly-by night enterprise. Another interesting concept was also to just really spend a lot of time in the community, even with the people we support, because we don't really have much space within our office. So we spend a lot of time in the community and doing job coaching. That's another way we, we are visible in the community. So people see what we do and, and the benefits of it. But then the actual marketing for a job is really based on one individual person's skills. And that's where we go into businesses and meet with them and negotiate. We did some soft employer contact in the early phases to just start to connect with some local area employers to find out who was in our community, what kinds of businesses they had, what kinds of job opportunities that were or weren't available, and to... Um, to do a soft marketing so that we could introduce ourselves and the work that we would be doing very soon. So, so we did a very so soft... It's basically just an introduction. This is who we are. We're new in the community. Just exactly. To let you know. That's exactly what we did. We went to business association meetings in Tawasson and, and Ladner and, and did those soft introductions at those meetings mm -hmm. as well. Um, let people know that, that we were in new employment services, that we were unique, and that um, we would be identifying where a person was at their best and the kinds of contributions they could make to, that, to the business, and um, that we wanted to learn more about businesses in our community. So just, I just want to build on that because I, early on we talked way back about yeah. you just walking the streets. So, yeah. so maybe just, can you just talk to me about how you learned who was in business in your community. If you're starting from scratch. Yeah, sorry. we're starting from yeah. scratch. And there's also the fact, you know, that one of the influences, Janet, was the fact that Delta is not a single community or area, that it is um, actually separate and distinct community cultures. So Tawasson and Ladner and North Delta are very unique and very different. And that was one of our first lessons, <laughs> is that um, the, um, the kind of contacts that we made in Ladner looked very different than the way we made contact with employers in North Delta. So different business culture, different expectations from employers in those communities. So we had to learn what was more viable, what was viable in each community and how best we could so, so make how did, contact. How did you find that out? How did, how did you come to the conclusion that the small business in Labner is different from the small business in Swaza? Just, just to give, kind of give us an example of how you, what did you do to figure that out? And, and maybe the impact it had, who you tried to uh -huh. match for services. Just a little bit of examples. Some of the things that we did when we started in Ladner, when there were um, enough referrals and we could start the CE process with a few people, through the discovery process, Janet, we, we did community cruising. Okay. And so through community cruising, we had a lot of conversations with a lot of different employers and businesses in each of those communities um, in, in our early phase and learned very quickly that one required a more formal, a more traditional business approach, and one was more receptive to a more casual, hi, we're from Delta Community Living Society, Solutions Employment Services, we'd like to learn more about your business and the kinds of work people do here. And this is a, this is a, a, a career interest of the particular person. So we were able to determine very different, very different community styles so through that Delta, process. Did you have to make appointments? Yes, and... yes. It was much more um, uh, uh, formal, professional, uh, somewhat more restricted. We were never successful just dropping in, you know. So that drop-in approach didn't fly in North Delta, but and flew in Ladner. but flew in Ladner and Tawasson to a degree. Tawasson and Ladner also pride themselves in their different community strengths. And so they also see themselves as different and distinct. And so do the business associations in those two communities. 
so sitting at the table at those business association meetings also helped us, especially in the early stages. That helped us recognize those um, those different cultures. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, sort of, in multiple, was around all the publicity that you solicited throughout the process. And I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about those opportunities and how you took advantage of opportunities like that or to, to publish your successes or to engage with your community in a public manner. Some of those examples would be really useful. I think the processes that worked in the early stages yeah. were the request to do presentation. And so Ladner Business Association, we made a presentation and at the point where we had our marketing materials ready, shared our information and asked for their support in the 10 by 10 challenge that year. And we had set a goal to try and work towards signing Delta onto that 10 by 10 challenge and wanted to encourage their, their participation. And so we used that provincial initiative as a tool to bring forward information about customized employment because we weren't yet operational but wanted to start to sensitize the business community about who we were and what we did. As part of developing our employment identity, um, we identified the need to be in the local business community, looked for a location that was accessible, uh, was easily accessed by people we were supporting and, and employers as well. In that process, we, we identified li this location and after a short time here, held an open house and invited all of our business contacts at that time. We invited all our uh, business neighbors. We had about 50 to 60 people attend our, our open house where we had wonderful guest speakers that included two of the people we were supporting and their employers. And they were some of the first successes that we had experienced. And they talked from the family perspective how that impacted their lives from the person who was working and the kinds of differences that that had made in their lives. Um, Self-reliance and uh, ability to earn their own income and make new friends and have a real job. Let's just talk about small communities. My experience in a small community, there's lots of benefits, and that is, it's a contained space, so it's easy to get to know people, to be known in the community, right? That you you don't have lots of little communities within that community; you just have that one. And so, uh, by becoming involved in in the local chamber, the downtown business association, that really gave me access to pretty much most businesses in the Ladysmith area. But I think whether that is a small community or a big community, um, it's being involved actively in any one of those organizations rather than just being a member and attending meetings that has made a really big difference in being known in the community. The other thing is in the small community is that people, the, the community members often have some kind of connection or to the people we support because they have gone to school there, they grew up there, they have family members, they know each other. So there's just a more that sense of caring for each other. Many of the businesses are run, are managed and run by the owner. So when we go into the business, we actually talk to the person that can make decisions rather than having, you know, big box stores where the person that makes the decision lives in Toronto. So that's one of the big benefits, I think, that we can talk to the people that make the decisions and get into the door fast that way. Even as the contractor, I'm also the frontline worker and I know even I know everybody we have supported. So you have a much and, and you're much more flexible. We don't have big rules. And, you know, if somebody gets a job on Sunday, well, we work on Sunday. If somebody works at night, we work. on. So because we're so small, we can be so flexible because it, we can make the decisions right here and there. And I found that throughout, throughout really the whole project interesting when we came, came together for meetings that um, because 
I, I was doing the work, but I also was the person in contact with the ministry and being aware of the whole contract system. I feel, always felt so much more informed than when you, when there's many layers of people involved with a contract. You know, there's again, it, it's both. There's a lot of challenges in a small community, and that is that the options are much more limited, right? Like, by example, in Ladysmith, we don't have light industrial. So the, the few bis the businesses that are there struggle very much themselves. And so it's hard for anybody in a small community to really find employment in that small, small community. One of the challenges that that I found that stemmed from being in a small community is there's not um, the number of people that are eligible for the support is small. That means you have a small contract. That means your um, limit, your you, your resources are limited in in creating a foundation. One of the I guess again of the challenges for us was to or not the challenges it's just a fact when you have a small community you have a small pool of people and sometimes we have opportunities in employment in our business that we cannot fulfill because we do not have a person with that skill so in a bigger community that would be much easier because you have many more people there are some advantages of using customized approach working in the environment that you work in yes in many ways because the customized employment in in its beginning stages of working with a, a job seeker through the discovery and the information interviews and the vocational themes the vocational themes and having to find 20 people and places for each theme really really helps you explore your communities much deeper because even as a relatively seasoned um, employment specialist, we still see businesses the ones we see when we drive by. But you're not going to, in a small community like Laysmith, you're really not going to find 60 different business opportunities or employment opportunities on, on the main street or even on 2nd or 3rd Avenue. <laughs> and because it's such an important part, those vocational themes and the 20 people and places per theme, to even go anywhere, it really makes you sit down and brainstorm. In any situation, I just think that is an amazing. And then the other thing is, big part of the customized employment is you're never looking for an existing job. So you're actually looking at creating a job, and in order to create a job, you have to negotiate with an employer. And that is really done best when the, the person you're talking to, or that is accessible in the business, is the person that can make the decision. In summary, and we can't say this often enough, customized employment relies on relationships. Networking takes time. We must be visible in our community, build relationships, and build trust. We've come to appreciate that all communities are different. Know your community and learn what works in your community. Relationships are important. Hello, I'm Connie Pullmontown and I'm Program Manager for Employment Services. I work with Leslie Thurcell. Jordan is a client of Leslie's who had a dream of working with children. And after Leslie had done all that hard work with Jordan and I knew about it, I happened to be talking to Jay Yule, who's the superintendent for School District 47. And we were talking at a job fair that I was attending on behalf of another client who was um, bringing in his resume for construction. And as we got talking, uh, I was saying to Jay, you know, it'd be really nice if someone was working in our school district, as it would be bring a lot of hope to parents and students to know that their son or daughter eventually maybe would have this opportunity to work within a school and give hope to work anywhere else in our community. Jay and I spoke briefly, and he said, you know, we really need to do this. Um, and the reason why I said this is because I explained what Jordan had done and what Leslie had done working towards her ECE assistant certification. So I made an appointment with Jay. We spoke for maybe 10 minutes and he said, you know, I really want to do this and I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I talked to him a little bit about the union because it is a union environment. And Jay basically said that 
as an employer, he has rights too, and he really felt this is a worthy cause. And he spoke to the HR person of School District 47, Colleen, and set me up to speak with her. And through that, Jordan received an interview and was interviewed by two people at the school district. And um, from there, it just kind of blossomed into a position. And Leslie now has been supporting Jordan with this dream. And so far, so good. So Jordan has been working at Edgehill School, and she's been there about three weeks. Each week, I have been in, in the classroom with her, just, um, just helping her and sort of guiding her of what is expected in the classroom and she's started to work quite closely with the teacher and actually with one student whose name is Jordan and he has broken his arm so she's been really assisting him quite a lot and actually mm -hmm. on Thursday when I went there she said you know for the first time that she felt that Jordan was relaxed and that she has really um, really found that Jordan was very helpful in the classroom and she's really looking forward to her being there. So we've been in negotiations with HR and with the school to find the, the right teacher and the right school and the right fit for Jordan and what's needed, especially in the school. So I think it's going to be very successful for Jordan and we're looking forward to hearing more about it and for her being able to show other people that this is a wonderful vocation for other um, people that are interested in it.